if there's a tree or a cliff or a ditch, it's probably better to hit it and get that energy to stop you than to have further damage. But if it's just a curb and grass or whatever, turn your wheel to it and then go over it like this. This vehicle is a 2016 CX-5. I shouldn't be seeing this because it should be under warranty. But what's not under warranty is if you slide into the curb. If you slide into a curb, here's five things you need to know. Number one, you can bend your wheel or break your wheel. Um, sometimes you get away with just minor curb rash. Other times you'll have a major bend or something that causes your wheel uh, to basically ruin the ride of your vehicle. Now there's two things on the list that can cause kind of a whoa, 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 whoa sound as you're driving. One of them is a wheel. Let's talk about number two. Number two is the wheel bearing. The second thing you should check after the wheel is the wheel bearing. Um, if you turn the wheel on a vehicle that has coil springs, you'll be able to feel something like some kind of a twitch or a movement or something. So if you grab the spring here while the vehicle is raised up on jack stands and secure, rotate the wheel and grab over the top of the wheel onto the spring. If the spring makes some kind of a weird feel or noise, or if you get a whoa, 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 whoa sound on the freeway, you may have damaged your wheel bearing. The bearings and the races can smash when they hit the curb uh, from the abrupt force and it can create all kinds of havoc on your wheel bearing where you have to replace it. Number three, the thing to check is the sidewall of the tire. This tire got away okay, uh, but you can have damage to the sidewall. What you should look for is any kind of gouging or penetration that can cause a blowout on the freeway later if it's cut through on the verge of failure. The other thing is the damage to the belts that run in this. If you have a bulge or something sticking out on the tire, you need to get that checked out and or replaced immediately. Number four is your lower control arm. It's not always limited just to that, but your lower control arm can get damaged. This one's been unbolted and pulled away from the subframe. Um, now I'm going to grab it somewhere in the middle and just kind of tap down. At first glance, these control arms look fine. It doesn't look like there's much anything wrong with them. They all look pretty straight until you get to the end of it. When you look at the end, you can see how the one is severely bent that way. See, on this side of the lower control arm, you can see a little shine here, and you can see where it kissed in a couple of places against the brake rotor, just really pegged into it. On the other side, you can see a little bit of a shine too. It's not like it's rocked to one side or another. It's just kind of rocked to both. It's like it's peeling it off both ends. And you see on uh, this part right here where it actually split a little bit. This wreaks havoc with your alignment. And number five is the strut and the strut mount. Now it's not just limited to these things. Basically anything in here can get destroyed. Um, the tie rod end can. I'm just keeping it down to five. Uh, but the next most likely thing to fail would be either your strut or your stabilizer link that attaches to the strut. These things, they take a lot of the brunt of the force. Imagine this is basically your upper control arm. Um, so the top part of your spindle, this assembly here, steering knuckle, is the strut. The bottom part's the lower control arm. We saw what happened to the lower control arm. Um, the same can happen to a strut. Watch for a crease along the bottom of the tube here. Um, watch for any kind of distortion or a clean spot sticking out from around your bolts. Uh, that could also be an indicator that something's been hit or gone wrong. Thanks for watching my video. Hopefully if you're watching this video and you've hit a curb, you'll be able to catch things uh, and be able to replace them if needed and be able to rule things out and not get ripped off if you take it in to get it fixed. Here's some other videos that I have of getting ready for winter. There's a playlist here, uh, how to winterize your car. There's 10 videos there to watch. If you want to subscribe and see more videos like this, be sure to click the link right here. And if you want to see all kinds of cars hitting curbs and whatnot in the snow like I wanted to show you, there's a playlist for that too.